Hello, welcome to our online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Rita, and our senior pastors are at our church. And we are just so thankful to have you joining us online today. Let's pray and we're going to enter into the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you for your Word. I thank you, Lord God, uh, that you continually just move through us throughout this entire time. I thank you, Lord God, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we're going to talk about today about wilderness uh, wisdom and under the influence of God. So no matter where you are, or, you know, once heard that the will of God is the safest place on earth and the most dangerous place on earth is outside of the will of God. It doesn't matter how many people you have around you or don't have around you. When you're in the will of God, you are fully, fully uh, the minority, a majority of whatever you're doing. God is, is blessing you in that area. And so I want to encourage you, if you've stepped away or walked away or, or kind of given up, get back into what God called you to do. There is no safer place. There's misery outside of the will of God. And and and, and that's just a place that, that you can overcome by just going Going back to God and, and being blessed by God. So we're going to talk about this wilderness wisdom in Matthew chapter four, verse one through four. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, he was afterwards unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So note, what's our greatest example is Jesus showing us this is how you deal with wilderness. This is how you deal with isolation. You know, during, you know, during the holiday and Christmas season, part of the thing of it is, is that we feel isolated and alone. Some gifts are those that are no longer, <laughs> are those that are no longer around. The things that are removed are usually a gift given to us for a peace. Uh, and usually that's sometimes that's people. And so Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, but the encounter wasn't defined by the temptation. Jesus defined it by the word of God. So whatever you're going through and whatever's coming to you, when you're obeying God, and here's one of the things we hear, and we've been hearing from ministry, been in ministry 30 years, that people say, I did all this for God, I was serving God, and things went wrong. Well, of course, you now have an enemy that, that really cares about stopping you from going and doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you can't let your circumstances influence you more than a word. And here's Jesus, the spirit led him out there to the temptation. However, we understand by reading these verses that the, it wasn't that Jesus walked away going like, man, I was so tempted by the devil. I was so tempted. And this is where this is where us as a church, we, we have to be careful about what comes out of our mouth and, and what we say and, and how we voice things and, and, and more uh, talking about the problem or talking about the attack more than what we what the response was. Well, Jesus uh, glorified God by the response. Man should not live by bread alone, but by Every word, here's the key thing, every word that comes out of the mouth of God, not some of the words, every word. And see what, what happens, and I believe, this is what I personally believe, uh, take this for what you want, that sometimes wilderness lasts longer in, in, a, in a sense of a lonely place than a place of a secret place. Your wilderness should be a secret place, not a lonely place. Jesus hides under the shadow of the Most High God. We hide under the shadow of the Most High God. So no matter how much the isolation looks, that's a place, that's a that's a garden of prayer. That's a garden, garden of intercession, a garden of worship, a garden of obedience and belief in God. And, and so it doesn't have to last that long. But think about the children of Israel that went on an 11-day journey, but they ended up having to stay in the wilderness 40 years. Why? Disobedience keeps you circling around the same thing over and over again. Well, here's here's the wisdom of God. I've given you a word. I've, I've, I've told you and spoke to you a word to get you out of this lonely place. And I believe there's healing there with all the things going on. I want to get into these dark times will remind us of our word time and strengthen us to voice God's word in times of isolation. What are you saying in times of isolation? Are you talking about what's left? Are you talking about who's left? See, because whenever whatever leaves you, you think about the one who will never leave you or forsake you. So I'd rather talk about the one that's left, that's still here, that's left over. 
that's still here. That's still that's still with me. And so that's what that's what dark times will begin to tell you. You know, like hey, here here's what's going on. And and, and listen, I'd rather talk about the goodness of God that stayed than the than than the weakness of man that left. And and that's where we have to be, especially in these in these season where the enemy loves to bring these things up. So you have to voice the word of God. And and so many things now in, in church where, where people become these Bible scholars who talk about preachers who who speak the word of God and say, you know, watching what you're saying and and, and believing it. Well, I, I believe that's a hundred percent true. If you go around talking about you're stupid and you're dumb and and you don't even the world knows you gotta have positive self-talk. Uh, so now you have you can have a valued word talk. You speak to yourself like God speaks to you. Say things that God say about you. Don't say things that are just based on what it feels like. And so these people have been called blabbing, grabbing, and all these things like that. Well, no, the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three that you'll have whatsoever you say. So I'd rather say things I want to have, not say things that are trying to happen to me. And so here's the here's the blessings of God. Here's what God wants us to do. So the gate to breakthrough of any wilderness circumstance is obedience to God during the process. Just because nobody's looking doesn't mean that God isn't working. And just because no one else can see, and, and, I, and I think that's one of the things that's, that's a tragedy because so many people want the response of people more than realizing they've already got the response of God. And, and just because people don't respond to what God has brought you to, that don't mean that he's, that don't mean you need to give up on it. No, that the response is my response is I want to be responsive to heaven. I want to be responsive to God. And, and even as Jesus walked out into this and led by the spirit of the wilderness, he had just been told by God, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, obviously the enemy goes right after the identity. One of the things that happens, especially during the, during the times of, of Christmas and holiday times is more people think about the tragedies that happen this time over the birth of Christ, over being thankful, over being grateful. And yeah, I'm sorry. And I got several of them. I got several deaths. We got several burials in our family. But I'd rather think about the one who was born. I'd rather think about Jesus who was born, the salvation that was born, my Savior that came into the earth. And, 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 and I'd rather lift up the name of Jesus rather than fall into a dark space. I'd rather walk under the, abide under the shadow of the Most High. I'd rather be seated in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. And so when you learn how to sit in the heavenly places, the anxiety, the fear, the emotional, mental damage that the enemy is trying to bring up on you, you've got too much wisdom to be in misery. And so here's where God begins to bring your message to you. And it is a fight. It is a fight for your mind. And this is when you got to protect your mind. You got to battle for your mind. You got to battle for a right thought life. That's why the Bible says, cast down every evil imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, that don't let your mind be carnally minded. And so God has constantly been, been telling you, fight for your mind, fight for your space to think about God, fight for your space to think about the blessings of God. Think about the word of God. Think about the authority. And a lot of times it isn't as much of a sickness as it is as an authority issue. Take authority over your mind. Take authority over your thoughts so that you can have the wisdom you need to have in the wilderness. You know, we, we say this a lot that maturity sometimes travel alone. And I believe that because a lot of times if we don't learn from the things that we've gone through, there are times that we'll just allow the uh, immaturity to stay. And as he posted that it is a great day to become wise over being wounded of past hurts. It's a great day for that. Protect, fight, fight for your mind, fight for your stability. Learn how to have joy in this time. Learn how to be a blessing in this time. Uh, and so this helps us sustain the breakthrough because we know what it took to get through. So it is, I know it's the word of God. I know I will always have the word of God because the, the word of God will never leave. It'll never fail. It'll never go away. Man can't change it. Man can't stop it. And so it's always going to have that. Now, John 6, 63, it says, my words are spirit 
and they are life. They are resurrection. They are life, right? And we understand in Romans, it says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in our mortal body. And so again, let's have a resurrection of the spirit of God. Let's have that part of it that's living, that's raising up into our thought life, raising up into our process and saying that no matter what the wilderness looks like, no matter if I seem to be engaging against the enemy all the time, I'm not going to wrestle in flesh and blood. If there's a high place, there's a spiritual thing that I'm going to fight in a spiritual way. I'm going to battle in spirit. And so I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to return to thankfulness in all that I do. The power of God's unchanging words means that we can stand on it and stay on it for eternity. So, and here's the deal. Like the Bible says, when you don't understand, stand therefore, that you may be able to resist all the evil darts and the fiery darts of the devil. Now, again, when you stand on it, don't forget to stay on it. See, a lot of times, a lot of people know how to stand on the word. Standing on it means I know how to speak it out. I know how to say it, but do I know how to stay on it? And if I stand on it, I need to learn how to stay on it so that I won't just be one of those people who only like to step on it. So a lot of people step on the word and then step off. No, no, no. I'm going to stand on it so I can stay on it. And that's where, where God is going to bring you up and bring you through. Uh, during the Christmas season, many people struggle mentally, as I've been saying. And here Jesus gives us direction on how to get through attacks against our, our identity and how to shut that voice against us down. I'm not living about what I can and can't do. I live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so there it is, there it is. The enemy is trying to get you to play God, get you to be God. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I get it, it's December. I get it that that all the things that I thought I was going to do this year and I feel like I'm running out of time. You're not running out of time. Don't accept that weakness. Go ahead and believe God. You got several more days, no matter how close to the end it is that you're listening to this message. Go ahead and accept your days and accept the power of God and accept the authority of God. When we accept weaknesses and we begin become faithless in certain areas, Areas, we give away our authority. And God says, no, I've given you authority. And so we got to come against that voice. We don't survive by the bread of what we did or didn't do. We are sustained by the word that comes from the mouth of God. And I would pray and I believe that we need to come out of this survival mode mentality and get in sustained mode that I'm going to stay in God's word and I'm going to sustain my words. I'm going to sustain my thoughts according to the word of God. And that's what's going to grow us. Turn to high standards of scripture. It will pull us up from the low places in life. So in Isaiah 59, 19, it says when the enemy comes in, and so you either, depending on where you want to put your comma, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises standard. Sometimes people like to put in when the enemy comes in like a flood. They like to put in the rush of the enemy. Then they'll say the Lord will raise up the standards. Well, if we come, if we say the enemy comes in, the, what should be flooding us is the spirit of God and the standards of God. That's what should flood you. Oh, this is an attack. Listen to God flood me and flood me about how well I am and how great that what God has done in me and what God has done for me, that I'm here because of the goodness and the power of God. I'm flooded by the mercy and grace of God. I'm flooded by my expectation that my God is able to do anything. Wisdom is the word of God applied accurately. That's wisdom. You can know something and not apply it. There are a lot of people probably with several gym memberships, but because they don't use them, it's not it's not working for them. They are investing something they're not invested in. And so I would say when you apply the word accurately, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Listen to this in Proverbs chapter 2. And verses one through six, it says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with, with thee, so that, thou, that, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice of understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. 
Now, again, if we go back to the message in Matthew about there's one man who built his house on the sand and one man who built his house on the rock. And the, and the man who builds his house on the sand is likened to someone who hears the word but never responds to it. The one who builds his house on the rock is one who hears the word and responds to it by doing what he heard, right? Don't ever live less than what you know. Be able to live let more than what be able to live according to what you know and then grow in what you know. When we feel unsure un, or even confused, we must begin to populate our mind and our situation with the word of God. Even at that point, even at that point of confusion, even at that point of slowly, slowly, the enemy's tacking, melting, melting, melting down. No, you go, wait a minute. Let me populate my mind. Let me get in the word. Let me get into worship. Let me get into Thanksgiving. Let me put something on about God. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine at, at the gym and, and he noticed that I was listening to sermons and he was saying, man, that's, that's what I do. When I'm here at the gym, I, I listen to Sam sermons or motivational speeches. And he was saying that when he listened to this, when he listens to other type stuff, he ends up having this, this uh, kind of aggressive anger type thing. And he didn't say what type of music he was listening to. But what he was saying was it wasn't just some, it wasn't something that was lifting him up. And no matter what they were singing about, it wasn't lifting him up. So he became more influenced by what he was hearing. And I believe that with all my heart, you'll be influenced by what you hear. But what, what comes into your mind, right? Because I, what I say to you, you're only going to remember 50%, but you'll remember 98% of what you say to yourself or what you hear about it yourself, what the chorus line is of something. So the word draws us to how God feels about our worth. And this breaks the hold of anxiety and emotional frustration. So when you put the word in it, it draws you to what God thinks you're worth, not what your situation says your worth is. It says that God said, I was worth dying for. I was worth coming, sending Jesus to die for. So I'm drawn to my worth. And when I know I'm value, when I know my value, anxiety, emotional, mo uh, mental anguish begins to fall off. And when you begin to see your worth, that's the power of God. So that's why you go and run to the word. That's why your wilderness wisdom is the power of God. I got a blessed, mighty couple of God, the Hobbs and, and, and Mrs. Devon that was sharing something with me that when she's home all day, she shuts off everything, don't have any sound. Now, I, I praise God for this because I'm not one of those people. I like background. But she, she, she practices being permanently in the presence of God. How powerful is that? And these are, these are my words about what she shared to me. Now, I, this is what I got out of that when she was just basically ministering to me. By the way, saints and preachers and whoever's listening to this, listen to one another. You got, everybody's got a message for you. This is practice permanent. A lot of people say practice makes per perfect. I think practice makes permanent. And now she has this point that no matter who leaves her life, she knows how to be alone with God. So I think that's the danger. I think that's what upsets people, that they don't know how to be alone with God. And they think that I'm just lonely. No, no, no. Use that time as an as, as your time to be just you and God. It is a perfect opportunity to be with you and God. Listen, this is the first Samuel chapter 3 verse 7. God is calling out to Samuel and he's calling out to Samuel, but he can't go. And he, Samuel keeps thinking Eli's calling. So Eli, you, he says, you call me? He goes, no, I didn't call you. And he, he comes back again. He goes, did you call me? He goes, no, I didn't call you. And then Eli realizes that's God calling him. But because Samuel didn't know God, he didn't, he couldn't hear God. Come on now. No matter what situation you go in, know what God said about it so you can hear what God is saying about it. And that is part of what God wants us to do is know God. And he couldn't hear God. He didn't recognize it was God because he did not know God. Many of us are going through things, but we got a more advantage than Samuel did. We know God. Now we have to get back to God's word. So God's calling to Samuel. He has to recognize it. As born again believers, we know our God and his wisdom fills us in the wilderness. Our knowledge reveals how we have been given authority over the attacks of the devil. Psalm 37, 23, great verse, the steps of a man, of a man, of a, of a, and the Bible says of a righteous man, of a good man are ordered by the Lord who takes delight in his journey. Ordered steps, ordered steps have nothing to do with us not encountering tough situations, but it does gives us the word to strengthen us through the storm. Now, again, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Lord and, and thank you, Jesus. Don't go on any other behalf. You shouldn't be there on any other behalf. Anyway, that being said, realize that you may encounter 
some resistance because of who you going on behalf of. Jesus said they don't hate you. They hate him. They first hated him because who you serve, now they are about being against you because you for God. No matter where the, the order steps take us, our good God will deliver us along the way. So don't quit. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, don't grow weary in well-doing for in due season, you're going to reap if you don't faint. If you just stay awake, you'll, you'll reap the harvest. We can't afford to allow a struggle to disqualify our commitment to walking with God. So again, when a struggle hits, go back to prayer. And a lot of times, here's the deal. If, if we make a mistake or if we fall short, we, we want to abandon what we were doing because we don't feel like we're good enough to be doing. Hey, let me, let me tell you something, sweetheart. You was never good enough to be doing what you were doing. It was God's greatness that brought you to his goodness that makes you want to do that. It makes you want to be in his presence. Amen? So don't ever measure it based on how good your day is going or not going. Base it on the fact, I just want to be with God. I just want to be with God. I know he knows. I know he knows how to get me through this. Respect every step God gives you to walk. And like small keys that open big doors, so does obedient steps unlock true treasures in life. Wow, that's powerful. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Don't disqualify the small steps. They will open some amazing doors. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. So this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So there is a battle, there is a fight, but listen, it says, this is walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So no matter what road walking in the spirit leads us into, the devil will never be able to have victory over us when we cling to God's word because we're walking in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh lusts against the spirit because the flesh don't want you because again, the flesh wants you to do what you want to do, but the spirit is fighting you so that you don't do what you would do. You do what God's called you to do. And that's, that's, that's where we want to be. It's right in the midst of the will of God, right in the midst of obeying God, right in the midst of that, the making that wilderness turn into something. So walking in the spirit will come with the attacks, but those attacks will not have an influence over our faith. Now, again, a lot of times people pray and they want the outcome to change, but God is saying, I want, I need to deal with your outlook. And if I can deal with your outlook, the outcome will be where you need it to be. But let's deal with your outlook. And therefore, we understand that the attack won't have more influence over you because the word is your influencer. If we want to use it in modern day term, the word of God is the greatest influencer you should have. Let me give you this one last verse. In Isaiah chapter one, verse 19 through 20, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So willing and obedient cause us to eat good. Uh, there is a level of mental starvation that happens through unbelief. There's a, a level of, 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 of mental emptiness and emotional em emptiness that comes from disobedience. But when we turn to obey God, even a simple thing of, God, I repent, I come to you, Lord, do your, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Just get me out of these hunger pains. Get me out of these cravings, Lord God. And so he says, obedience to God will bring forth springs of living water in driest of circumstances and produce an abundance for us to live by. It is those points of that. So again, don't refuse. Don't rebel because everyone has walked out. Don't rebel on the one who's always there. Go with him. Don't rebel against him. Turn toward him and then watch so that you can be fulfilled and learn how to eat right where you are in the blessed place of the living God. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that that the, the, those of us who that in, in here and, and share this word with others who feel isolated, alone, hurt, thinking about old pains and all different things like that, that this word will resonate in them, Lord God, that that's wilderness time will become a wisdom time. It'll be a time for them to become wise. And as they begin to grow in the word of God in this seats, it's going to bless them to be overcomers. And Lord, we just thank you. It'll be a season of joy. And what the devil meant to bring up about hurt and pain, God is going to bring about joy and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.